a neglected tropical disease is now here to stay in the United States. Experts call it Chagas disease, spread by insects, also called kissing bugs. So tame, so innocent. Innocent name for a bug that spreads a potentially deadly illness. We, were we brought this information to you earlier this week. John was completely grossed out by it. Yes. And so, so what you need to know about it, Dr. Sanjay Gupta is back to answer your questions. Hi, Sanjay. Um, so let's I, jump I into like the doing the gross segments, apparently. The, you know, you know it's, it's part of your job title and gross expert. Right. Um, so the first question that came in is from Deidre, and she, I think everyone would like to know this as well. What's the treatment for the kissing bug disease? Yeah, so, so again, keep in mind, as you mentioned, tropical disease has found its way further north because of the warm temperatures. It's a parasite. So we talk about bacteria, viruses, and parasite. What these bugs are spreading is a parasite. And I guess the good news in that is that there are anti-parasitic drugs that really are quite effective, actually, at treating this. Benzonidazole and, and nifertamox are the two, uh, you don't have to say those, thankfully, those, those two anti-parasitic drugs. A um, couple things about them. First of all, they're, they're really effective if taken early but the effectiveness wears off. So if you're, if you're worried about this, don't wait to potentially get tested, which you can do through a blood test, and potentially get treated as well. So you don't want to wait on this. There's, you know, there's thousands of antibiotics out there. There's hundreds of antivirals. There's only dozens of antiparasitics. But luckily, in this case, it works pretty well. Got to take it for 60 days, these oh, medications. Wow. So it's, a, it's quite, a, quite a, uh, an investment of time and energy, hundreds of dollars to take it. Best to avoid getting the disease in the first place, but there is a treatment available. Yeah, I got to say, worth it given given the symptoms uh, yeah. that you, you described yesterday of what can happen if you do get it. Yeah. Uh, Found him in Miami, which is in Florida, which I think is one of the states potentially most impacted by this, asks, can it also affect pets? And does bug repellent maybe help in, in, in keep these things from biting? Yeah, so it, it does seem to affect animals, in, including pets. In fact, they sometimes are the harbingers or the first to, to get infected to give an idea cool. that the bugs are actually there. More so dogs than cats when it comes to, uh, comes to your pets. Cats tend to be more carriers, uh, so they don't necessarily get sick, but dogs can actually get quite sick. They can get infected the same way, meaning that a bug will actually bite them and leave some of the parasite, which can then get into the body. Um, but they can also eat uh, infected animals. That's another common way dogs in particular will become infected. It can be tough to tell, I mean, because the symptoms, um, you know, can, you know, you don't really know what's going on with your dog. They may have lethargy. They may just uh, eventually develop cardiac problems. But if you're worried about it, again, there is a blood test that veterinarians are now performing increasingly in the United States looking for, for Chagas disease. So this some potential treatments there available as well for the dog just like with the human. This thing is just gross and annoying. There's, I mean, there's every question is like, it just gets worse and worse. I'm hating this thing. <laughs> I mean, is there any, give me a silver lining, Sanjay, because Stacy asked this from, from Little Rock. It's a, a very good question. You said the, <laughs> the warm temperatures have brought the bugs north. Are, are the bugs gonna go away when the colder weather sets in? And remind everyone of the early, every one of the early symptoms. Yeah, so there, there is the silver lining. These things like warm temperatures. Um, that's why they were a tropical disease for so long. And again, the reason we're seeing things like this, including you know, this, this kissing bug disease, but also things like Zika and West Nile, is because weathers have, the weather has gotten warmer. But at the same time, as it starts to cool down uh, in the next few months, these things will drop down to basically zero. If you look at transmission below 62 degrees, uh, these things really are not infecting anymore. So if you've gotten to that point where you live, probably going to be okay, at least for the rest of the year, the rest of the season. Um, the, the, uh, in terms of early symptoms, again, it, it can be somewhat vague. Uh, you may not know. So fever, rash, headaches, things like that. The, the, the characteristic thing is really what you see on the skin, something known as a chagoma. So if you think you've been bitten by one of these things and you see this sort of characteristic chagoma on your skin or on your face, they're called kissing bugs because they tend to bite on your face in particular, and then you rub the parasite into I mean, your, typically, that, that's the eyelid. That, that if you go to places in rural Mexico and Central America, South America, you will see that sign. It's called the Ramona sign, the swollen eyelid. That's characteristic of, of Chagas disease.
I mean, this is just gross. Yeah. <laughs> and dangerous. I'm sorry. I mean, I'm thinking, I like, bug, well, bites, yeah. bug bites are, I'm no, not it. a fan of. You tell me then you're going to give me a bug bite on my face? With a like, parasite, <laughs> which is nice. It's a step too far, Sanjay. Yeah. It's a step too far. Uh, thank you, Sanjay. Very cool much. weather and anti-parasitics. You got I'm it. praying for a cold winter. fighting so long and so hard that they don't know what the f they're doing.